Okay, let's uh, let's quickly review. That's not it. Uh, what uh, oh, we've been talking about parametric curves, and uh, the most uh, I guess the ellipse, uh, the, the simplest one is certainly the circle in the st starting point. Uh, the ellipse uh, shows you the um, especially how you can uh, parameterize things in a different way, and so. And it's all about motion. At least the, the, the metaphor for a parameter curve is motion. Uh, the circle is the simplest one. The uh, second simplest, uh, well, the, the simplest is the straight line, but the uh, simplest interesting one is the circle. Uh, the ellipse is second uh, interesting, second simplest. And uh, we, we have uh, three, right here, three different parameterizations of it. Uh, the, same, the same circle, the same object, geometrically speaking. But you can move through it in a, in a th three very uh, specific uh, but different ways. And one starting probably is at the bottom. Uh, in fact, is it is when you're moving. Uh, um, uh, if you parameterize it with the uh, with the uh, usual way of uh, parameterizing y as a function of x. Okay, so calculus one and before. So that that's what 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 this is. If you try to plot it, this is what you're going to end up with. You're gonna you're gonna move it. Uh, so suppose this is your uh, ellipse, and you start moving from left to right necessarily, and then you start with a big jump, and then they start to uh, come together and closer and closer. In the at the top, you go uh, very dense, and then less and less dense, and then you drop down like this. Okay, why? Because the horizontal distances are equal, which means that wherever the slope is steep, right in the beginning and the end, you will be jumping very high. And then, as it becomes more horizontal, you move uh, at a, an equal um, um, equal uh, intervals horizontally. Okay, so that's that's one parameterization. The other parameterization is based on based on the angle. Okay, that's number one. Uh, the angle, in other words, equal angle, you pass uh, through and you make marks accordingly on the uh, on this on the circle. So it's not the distance uh, covered. Uh, that's that's not what it is. It's it, it's so it's it's more complex than the circle. With on the circle, it is equal angle, equal distance. On the you pass on the on the on, on the curve, uh, but this one is uh, based uh, might might cover longer distances. And the uh, probably the most interesting of these is the last one. It is the uh, motion of the of planets. Uh, based on uh, Kepler's laws, and according to his law, the uh, um, the uh, you cover you you sweep the same area um, every period of equal period of time, sweep the same area uh, from from one point to the next. Okay, so that it means that it will be asymmetric uh, because uh, the sun is located in the focus, say on the left focus on the left of the of the solar system, and then the, then you are moving slower along. See what the, what I mark here. Uh, you have moved from point A to point B like this, and you swept this blue area. But you are closer to the uh, to the sun than when you are on the opposite end. So as you can see, this is the same same time uh, period, and as here, as on the left and on the right. But the uh, one is uh, the kind of a triangular uh, region is more elongated. Uh, and that is why it is, it, is, it is narrow in order to have the same area. Okay, so these two have the same area, and which means that if you want to now understand how, how, how fast you're moving along the curve, then you're moving faster. So slower here and faster, faster there. Okay, so it is, it is entirely asymmetric. I have here a, a little... Uh, demonstration, so which is based on, uh, as you can see, the well. It's, it's, this is based not on Kepler; it's based on on uh, Newton. So Newton's law of, of gravity is being is uh, encoded here, and then uh, uh, based on the force of gravity, we derive the uh, acceleration. From acceleration, we derive the velocity. From velocity, we uh, we uh, uh, recover the position. So here it is actually both of the objects can move, but this this is the simplest case when the sun is fixed. And I can just uh, start moving like hmm, what happened here? Ah, wrong button. Okay, so well, that's not an ellipse. 
I, I thought I had a it is ma making a complicated shape and I can't figure out what this is uh, um, so the force no the force seems to be okay well that doesn't really matter the point is that we could do a, a solar system if we want we can have as many as many uh, as many planets as we want we can we can uh, move, uh, uh, having gravity uh, uh, gravitated towards the earth uh, towards the sun as well as each other and that that is only uh, makes things complicated but really you don't have to do any uh, integration as as you can see uh, it is it is simply uh, simple algebra so anyway so the, the point is that any any curve can be uh, can be uh, acquired uh, in that manner if you, if the physics uh, is understood and uh, well certainly if we just take for granted the uh, gra law of gravity Newton's law of gravity that's that's what you can uh, you can you can produce Okay, so, uh, but most of the time this, this uh, stuff is postponed until uh, calculus 3 and especially after uh, differential equations because it is not, uh, it doesn't exactly fit into, uh, into the curriculum because, uh, um, uh, because of the, uh, we, are, we are talking about uh, uh, integration on one hand, on the other hand it is, it is not, uh, it cannot be integrated in the direct way as we have done, so if you know function then you know it's derivative uh, antiderivative and then antiderivative antiderivative that's how you move from acceleration to uh, to position uh, but as you can see here acceleration does not depend on time it depends on location and that's that's what make it makes it uh, a differential equation rather than just a, um, a function to be integrated okay so but uh, so anyway it can be done uh, can be done fairly easily if you just uh, understand the um, well what's missing is uh, is uh, um, more experience with the multi-dimensional well two or three dimensional space this is two-dimensional uh, but as you can see it could be three-dimensional as well uh, there is no trouble it's, it's it's simply data the visualization is hard uh, but, but other, other than that the data is uh, is simply you have an extra column so you have x y or you have x y and z that's that's all okay so um but uh the point is uh, a more important point right now it is to start thinking about these things as as functions so as functions so even though this is all, all very interesting and uh, where, where, where to find out where it comes from, either derivation of the uh, Kepler's law or what we did last time was deriving the shape of the cycloid, uh, motion of a, of a, um, of what, of a, um, uh, of a reflector on the rim of your bicycle. Okay, so depending on where you put, not, not necessarily on the rim, well, this is for the rim. The, right at the end, as you can see, that yellow dot over there, it, is, it means that uh, the uh, reflector is located exactly uh, at the very end of your, of your wheel. Okay, in that case, uh, the, the shape that we have produced is, is, uh, uh, is, is this. Well, uh, I have somewhere... Uh, we, we, we did build, build a, a picture here uh, with Excel. Okay, uh, so that, that's, that's what it is. As you can see, it, it goes up uh, before it goes down. So if I put here, as I recall, uh, if the time is just like this. Okay, so that's the big shape. Okay, so the shape goes up and down. That's that's the the actual path is on the left, while the dependence of x on t and y on t is on the right. So so those two functions are combined together into that path on the left. This is what you actually see in space and in time is the this kind of path up and down. Okay, so and then and then so that's not technically calculus. Uh, the calculus comes into play when we start thinking about uh, rates of change. And uh, the dots, when they get close together, we know that is an indicator uh, that uh, we are moving faster. Uh, I'm sorry, you're moving slower, which means that, as you can see, that at the fastest you are moving, well, uh, the slowest you're moving here. Uh, that, that's what you, you discover is that, uh, in fact, when you uh, touch the ground, is you touch it in a, in a soft way. Why? Because even though you're going fast down, then you slow down, slow down, and then you slow down to zero when you touch the ground, and then you slowly start to speed up. Okay, so that's what, uh, what this uh, indication of. 
And um, so this is a more same same thing, only more points that you can see. Okay, so that explains why uh, that experience when you have, when you drive on uh, your bicycle through a puddle of water and then you might end up with, uh, uh, with water on your back. Why? Because, uh, because the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the water or whatever dirt, uh, it will attach itself to the wheel first and then it will, it, as we know, it's supposed to go on a tangent but not on a tangent from the, uh, uh, from the wheel, okay, but from the trajectory of, of that object. Okay, so if you, if you, if you think about it, uh, it that probably would be a, a, a first thought that comes to mind if you are here. Okay, you're driving through water, okay, so then it would be in a more static way, uh, the wheel is turning this way, right? So, which means that the water on a tangent, it might seem it go, it's going like this. This is the tangent. So, the water seems to be pushed backwards by, by the wheel because that is the tangent. But really, it is not, it would be true if the wheel was not moving forward. But it is moving forward, that, that is why the, you have to look at the actual trajectory of, of that point on the, on the wheel because uh, the wheel picks up the dirt and carries it on with itself. Why does it carry on the water or, or, um, uh, or dirt? Because it's so, it's so slow, okay? It does not go on the tangent right away. So there is some kind of adhesion and uh, as you, uh, uh, and, then, and then it breaks, breaks down, why? Because you accelerate. You start with the zero acceleration, you speed up, speed up, speed up, and then at some point, it, uh, the, that adhesion doesn't hold uh, the water anymore, and it flies. But where does it fly? It flies in tangent to this curve, okay? So that is, and you look at the, where the tangent is, it's, po it's pointing forward. So even though the wheel seems to be pushing water back, but the trajectory actually is moving forward, and therefore the, uh, the tangent line will go, will go like, uh, like this. Uh, well, where's my curve? This is my curve. Uh, it will go like like this. So if we're here, it will go like this, forward, like this, and that that will hit you uh, hit you in the back, okay? Because the tangent actually is not backwards but but forward. Um, so that that's that's what you you, you can discover uh, by by investigating uh, this kind of curve. Uh, you can uh, certainly create a similar curve for rotation of an object uh, uh, through. Uh, um, uh, like like a moon around the around the Earth around the Sun, it will exhibit a similar a similar pattern, uh, like like this. So it will be moving like this, roughly. Okay, so similar similar formulas uh, will will be produced, uh, and so once again you can you can investigate the uh, where um, uh, the direction of the tangents, and. Um, so, so that's that certainly is an interesting example, but uh, it's better to start thinking about uh, about parametric curves as, as functions rather than uh, examples of, of functions, because uh, these problems have been solved, and that that is why we we it is presented to you because the problems are solved and they produce something important. But that is solved in the past. So if you are to solve the problem that haven't been hasn't been solved yet, then uh, uh, then you have to think uh, in the abstract, in in the abstract, and then analyze whatever is uh, is given to you. Uh, so in this particular case, in the uh, so in, it means that uh, you look at the two functions of of t, and then uh, and then you have start have to where is it my, my definition of of a parameter curve? Um, it is nothing but but two functions. Okay, so this is uh, this is what I'm talking about. Two functions of the same variable. What are they? It doesn't matter. We don't know, and we have to, we have to imagine that they, it could be anything. So any two functions combined together will give you, uh, will give you a parameter curve. So let me uh, show you a little bit of what, how it might work out. Uh, well, here it is. Okay. Interesting. Let's try 
again. <laughs> Cannot open. Well, anyway, um. So I guess I guess it's uh, I guess we can illustrate it with the uh, the idea can be illustrated with the um, uh, with the uh, Excel and um, um, uh, the cycloid. So uh, two functions are uh, plotted uh, x of t and y of t are plotted on the right. Well, it doesn't matter what they they plotted. The plots are are secondary. They are only for visualization, even in dimension three, it will be very hard to visualize anything, any complex, complex behavior. So the uh, solar system is flat, and that's why you can visualize it in, in dimension two for the for the most part. So just flat, uh, but anything more complex, and the, it will be, it would be uh, hard to, uh, to visualize. So you have to understand them as is, as uh, just two functions or three functions in the three-dimensional case and then you have to see how that produces a new function one function and so uh, so once again x depends on t right here x depends on t y depends on t so that makes it two functions but then you form a new function with uh, t the input and uh, x and y are two outputs well not two outputs one output Okay, so uh, in other words, in other words, well, I guess I guess I should start writing here. <coughs> okay, so a parameter curve is two functions of the same variable. So x is equal to x of t. Well, let's let's just put f here. F of t, y equal g of t. Okay. Uh, so literally two functions as we have understood them uh, forever. So x is a number, y is a number, t is a number, and these are two functions. Whatever they plotted, like it does matter. Uh, but the uh, the way to to think about it is to combine uh, combine into one, into one what? Into one output. So x, y is, uh, after all, what is x, y if not a point on the, on the plane? So we're moving into higher dimensions, and it, which means that our functions will have uh, inputs, outputs, uh, variables of, of, of different dimensions. So, so if it, they, it has been always a number okay so just like those two functions so here input is a number output is a number but uh, it is uh, it is a good idea to start moving in the direction of uh, when input and in inputs and outputs of so functions might be of different nature, uh, different from just numbers. So, uh, so in particular, that's that's the uh, starting point is uh, thinking of the output of our function as uh, as a point on the plane. So, input. No, that's the output. Output is x y, a point on the plane. Input is t. It's still just a number. So we made the output more complicated, but not the input. So, so the metaphor remains the same. The input is a number. I'm, I'm sorry. The input is time, and output is location. But if you start thinking in a more mathematical sense, the uh, input is a number. Output is a uh, location, a point. Okay. So, so that that that's how you have. Uh, you may have a, a picture like this. So you mark with uh, say uh, t equals zero here. T equal one. Uh, t equal 2, so t equal 3, t equal 5, like this. Well, every location is, after all, is a point. Okay, the direction is only matters because we want to know which way, which way we're going. But otherwise, it is just a, a visualization, like this. Okay, so, uh, so inputs are uh, listed. 
and the outputs are locations. So these are definitely not numbers. So these are x, y's, and they are not, uh, well, they're just not numbers, and that, that is uh, uh, the, the step that is uh, uh, very important. Once, once, you, uh, once you make that step, it's so much easier to, uh, to then go to, into any dimension that you can imagine uh, because, uh, well, so we have a, a point on the plane, okay, then you just move on to point in space. And then if it is, a, it is a physical space, and then you can think of uh, n-dimensional spaces if uh, you're dealing with uh, uh, man-made spaces, man-made man -made quantities, uh, you can string up any, any number of quantities uh, and, and it will still be nothing but a parameter curve. So you're moving through the space of, uh, of say, prices uh, or any, any, other, any other data, and uh, that would be still a parameter curve. Okay, so, uh, so this is once again is just a visualization. And uh, uh, beyond dimension two and definitely beyond dimension three, visualizations fail in the, and we, will, we have to rely on, on functions. So any two functions f and g combined together give me, uh, give me um, um, uh, a parameter curve. So I could think of it as uh, t combined with, uh, not combined, but producing, uh, producing um, that's, that's what our function is now, uh, input. Uh, t output x y okay and uh, um, uh, that's what the parametric curve is and then and then what what uh, what, what the, the challenge is is how to uh, apply what we know about calculus um, to these new functions so these are new kind of functions So I already pointed out how, how we can do it, uh, and that is uh, simply looking at, at the, the f and g separately, uh, derivative of f, der derivative of g, and you know the directions of in which the every, uh, every uh, function goes. So you might remember that you have every, which, way, which way the parameter curve goes. Uh, there was uh, one or two problems uh, in, the, in the homework about that, so, so that, is, that is very helpful. You can also find out uh, uh, the tangents. You can know at which angle, for example, the curve uh, crosses a certain horizontal line, vertical line, whichever, how far it goes. Um, in the left direction, in the right direction, all of that can be established through, um, through simply uh, differentiation. Uh, for example, uh, well, if I look, this is the leftmost, leftmost location. Okay, how do we find it? What's so special about this point? So in general, what uh, it is a leftmost location. What does it that? How do you translate that kind of informal description? in terms of uh, functions f and g. Leftmost. What does it tell you about x? What does it have to do with x? The smallest value of x. So this is where we're x is the smallest, okay, but x is equal to f of t, so how do we restate this in terms of f? So that's where, that's the, that's the t where, what? The smallest, smallest value, so how do we, what do we call it? Smallest value? In calculus one, the other way to describe it.
it's uh, it's the minimum so to find how to find the minimum of one function uh, observe that there is no there is no uh, y once we restated this in terms of x there is no y to worry about so in terms of x we have one function we have uh, two variables t and x uh, we, what we want to try to find is to the minimum of that uh, of that function so how do we find the minimum of that function oh any function minimum most values like this. Take the derivative, Take the derivative and. and it's, uh, where, like where it changes direction. Right. Uh, so I find if prime, uh, find t where f prime changes sign, changes its sign. In the partic in this particular case, we're talking about changing from. So the smallest value, it means the direction. This is, this is x and y. This is what I'm talking about now. I'm talking about the function f as a function of x as a function of t. OK, so this is the t I'm talking about, the special value where there is the minimum. OK, that's the minimum. And what is so special about it is that for one, it is where the derivative is equal to 0. OK, and then furthermore, it is the point where the sign of the derivative changes from from what? How how is the uh, sign changed as we move through through this point? What's the sign of the derivative to the left? Negative. It is negative, right? So this is uh, slope is negative over here. Slope is positive, and that's what we are after from uh, negative to positive. So assuming that uh, the functions involved, uh, involved are differentiable, uh, then that's all, uh, all we need. Uh, like I said, you just uh, uh, we, we did that in calculus one. So as long as the problem is entirely uh, one-dimensional, we extract one-dimensional problem from our two-dimensional situation. So we concentrate on x. Suddenly we realize that we don't really uh, need y. So to find then that, that the left most position uh, is the same as uh, the position where where uh, the, um, uh, the 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 uh, x takes the minimum value, which means that f takes the minimum value, and that solved problem is a problem of calculus one. It is solved by finding the derivative is set equal to zero. Uh, will will give you a set of critical points, and then uh, and then uh, specifically you find where the derivative changes its sign from negative to positive. That indicates uh, minimum. Okay. So, uh, so that that's so you know, we can find it. Then no, no problem. They, all the methods, uh, techniques from calculus one apply. Uh, but uh, certainly there are also lessons to be learned here. And the lessons are, for example, uh, it is uh, let's let's think in terms of of, 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 of derivatives and tangent lines. And uh, um, so derivative equal to zero means means this slope is zero. Okay. But on the other hand, what does it tell us uh, about the slope of my parameter curve, the original parameter curve? Well, it is right here. This is the tangent. And what's so special about it? Well, that, that, that's a good point. Uh, it, um, what are you saying? The slope is undefined. Uh, the slope, as uh, the slope as uh, as we have understood it, as a, um, a slope of uh, rise of the run. Okay, so it's undefined indeed, but uh, we are not um, we are not in that place anymore because. Um, we, we need it for, to begin with. Uh, the, the, the tangent is, is vertical. And there is nothing wrong with moving vertically. Uh, so there is no, uh, there is no this uh, uh, inequality between, between, uh, between x and y anymore. It is now the, uh, they're not, uh, it's not y, y does not depend on x anymore. 
okay? Uh, y depends on t, and x depends on t, and that is why all the calculus one does apply, but it applies to one variable at a time. So x depends on t. It's still all the uh, uh, methods as well as the problem, such as undefined uh, tangent, uh, apply. Uh, but here we cannot just leave it in and say that the uh, tangent is undefined because the tangent line is clearly there. It is just happens to be vertical, so which means that the slope cannot be expressed as a, as a number as rise over the run. Uh, so rise over the run. Here it is still fine. Rise over the run, right? The slope is zero. Uh, rise over the run. But here it is not working anymore because it is possible that our run is zero, and that is which we we can just we can just consider the motion entirely vertical, and and we still like moving like this. Nothing wrong with it, and we still need to understand uh, its tangent. Uh, uh, in this particular case, if we're looking at that curve, back back to that curve, we uh, might be interested in where is uh, the where is the tangent? Because if it's motion, then we want to uh, ask ourselves where if if uh, we throw an object or uh, which way is going to go. Okay, so either it is uh, uh, something is uh, on a rope and it breaks away, or once again it is. Uh, um, dirt, piece of dirt on the, on the wheel of a bicycle or a anything like that, we want to know where the tangent is. And, uh, and we are not, we, can, we cannot just uh, uh, separately treat the, um, uh, we, we, we cannot separately treat the, uh, uh, the, uh, the special case, the vertical as a special case. It's not a special anymore because there are, there are no particular direction. X and Y are these, but imagine that was made up. How about I put the uh, different uh, coordinate system like this, x and y. There is nothing wrong with it. Then the uh, that vertical line is not vertical anymore. I mean, the if we're talking about uh, space and motion in space, there are no axes uh, anywhere visible. It is uh, uh, our will to uh, assign a particular coordinate system, Cartesian system, to the world that we're studying for our convenience. But the world doesn't know that, and so we have to, uh, we have to be able to handle problems, uh, even though, uh, even though it might be uh, uh, the, that that system that we have chosen may may be um, may be in, uh, that may, might not match things as well as we would like to. But uh, uh, things should still work out. So uh, the point how it works out, we need to look at the two derivatives separately. And what that, that's what we know. Uh, turns out that uh, what we have discovered is that uh, f prime is equal to 0. And that, that is it. Uh, that is the, uh, how we, we describe the uh, vertical line, is the one with the derivative of, of, of the first uh, variable equal to 0. OK, so if we were, for example, uh, let, let me reproduce this picture. So if we, we are studying uh, some complex motion, OK, so what we discovered here, uh, this is the tangent line. It is the tangent line is vertical. And over here, also tangent line, and it is horizontal. And elsewhere, it could be something else. We don't know. So this over here, the tangent line is neither horizontal nor vertical. And uh, 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 all of these lines, we have to be able to handle whether they are vertical or horizontal. Fortunately, it's, it's really not a problem. Uh, all, we all we need is just to look at the two derivatives simultaneously. OK, so, uh, so we consider f prime of t, g prime of t together. OK, so uh, and that gives us what we would call uh, a vector. It gives, it gives you a direction like this. So uh, if this is f prime of t, one number, it is the, uh, the rate of change of, of our horizontal progress. OK, and then there is a, a, a g prime of t at the same moment. That is the rate of change of our vertical progress. Remember, like, uh, like if we were moving and we're looking at the two shadows on the, on the wall, one is uh, uh, or one on the floor and the other one on the wall, and look at how fast they move. So these are two, uh, two numbers that, uh, that gives us the, the whole picture. And uh, it just happens so, and then, then well, this is, this is the, the vector of, of the velocity. So there are two components, uh, horizontal and vertical components of the velocity, and they are, in other words, they're simply the two derivatives 
of our two functions, and then we are we are what we do is just we combine them together into into uh, into a pair, and that pair will give us rather than looking at the rise over the run, we we don't want to we just don't do it. Okay, so as you can see, I could have I could have taken these two numbers and just divide them and say, well, uh, f prime of t is the uh, is the run, and this one is the rise. Okay, so and then I would have a slope. We just don't do that. We, we keep it as is. We do not try to divide one by the other to find the slope, but rather uh, because why we don't really want to do it? Because we, there is a good chance that we're going to divide by zero, and we just don't want that. Okay, so we just keep these two numbers uh, separately, and not, not rather separately, but together, but not uh, trying to come up with one number. So after all, everything is two-dimensional, motion is two-dimensional, so uh, the quantities that we'll be dealing with uh, will be two-dimensional, and we, are, we should avoid trying to reduce everything to one-dimensional, even, even if it will bring us back to calculus one, a good thing, uh, and whenever we could, we, we might try to sometimes, it is sometimes it gives us some breakthrough, uh, but but in general it just in general it cannot work every time so we just as well we could uh, we could try to stick to two dimensional situation altogether so if when we're talking about the uh, the rate of change of, of a function like that what would it be the function is made of two functions right my parameter curve uh, my parameter curve is made to, of two functions f and g so then its derivative is made of also two functions f prime g prime. Okay, and at every t, it will give me the direction of my motion. Okay, so uh, uh, according to the change in line, and probably uh, with a direction pointed out specifically, so a tangent line, for example, this tangent line, it's not just a tangent line, but it's tangent line with a direction. The same thing here, the tangent line is pointing this way, and that tangent line uh, points, uh, points that way. Okay, so that pair of, of the two derivatives will give you uh, uh, will give you the direction of your motion, um, and one of them, or both, or well, not both of them, but if one of them is zero, it's, it's still fine. It's still fine because if one of them is zero, it simply means that if the first one is zero, then the motion is entirely vertical. If the second one is zero, it, the motion is entirely uh, horizontal. That's all. Uh, not, not, nothing really uh, exotic uh, is happening here. Um, so, like I said, you, you'll have more and more uh, numbers of functions to worry about, uh, but that, that, that pays off ultimately. Um, and um, like I said, dividing rise of by, by the run is, my, is not advisable, generally speaking. So it's more exceptional than uh, an exception than a rule. Okay, so uh, so that's how calculus comes into play. Uh, uh, integration can also be done in a similar similar way, uh, but this is probably the more interesting part. Early on, is just to look at uh, at the direction of your think of this as a motion, and look at the at the derivative. The derivatives uh, that combine together give you the direction of your uh, of your uh, motion. So velocity is uh, the direction. Of motion uh, combined with the speed, the speed of motions. So, in what direction you're going, as well as how fast. That, that's what uh, the two derivatives combined together uh, give you. So, it's always a triangle like this. If you work out the uh, the two functions involved, then it, it will be always two numbers. It's always. Uh, um, a, tri a triangle or or square if you prefer so for example in particular this probably is a, a good way to look at uh, the f a ball thrown in the air okay then uh, at each location you could you could you a uh, tangent line is easy to draw but if we want to uh, make it um, if we, we want to make it uh, coordinate study coordinate wise uh, then uh, this is your initial situation uh, so what does it mean? It means that I'm throwing the ball at this particular speed in in this direction. This is my direction of my throw, okay? But it has a component, vertical component, horizontal component, and uh, and that that uh, uh, so you probably would start with the speed and the angle, and then from the speed and the angle you could find. Uh, 
the angle gives you the direction. So speed then the angle will give you uh, give you the two components of the initial velocity. Uh, you might be dealing with that problem in uh, in your in your project. So so that that that's why it's important. I mean the uh, what how, how does it work out? So uh, f prime of zero is then uh, uh, say the speed say s and, and uh, angle is alpha then uh, it will be s cosine alpha and g prime of zero is s sine alpha okay so uh, varying these uh, so it's, it's, it's typically the problem that is set usually the uh, the the, um, the speed is is set for example, if it is a cannon, uh, the, and, uh, it has the same load of, of powder, uh, gunpowder, and so it will throw the ball at the same speed no matter what the angle is. So the only thing that you can vary uh, is the angle. And then, uh, and then you take cosine, uh, cosine alpha, sine, sine alpha to find, uh, the, uh, to, to find the two components. And from those, those two components, you can derive in the manner that we just discussed uh, the uh, the motion of, of, of the rest of it, um, uh, and uh, in particular, you could uh, the another fact that uh, everybody knows, but uh, might be uh, uh, not quite ready to prove, and that is uh, a proof that um, 45 degrees 45 degrees is the best. Uh, for longest distance. So either you have the same uh, power of throw or you have the same gunpowder in your cannon uh, and you want to hit it as, uh, uh, shoot it as far as you can, you put it at 45 degrees. Uh, the answer is uh, 45 degrees is, is kind of a, it's, it's halfway between zero and nine degrees. So, so sir, certainly if you shoot it up, it will drop down zero, zero distance. If you shoot forward, once again, it's not going to go anywhere, so naturally, let's pick 45 degrees. It's just so naively obvious that it's supposed to be 45 degrees, but really proving, it, uh, proving that is not, is not that simple. Uh, anybody knows how to, how to prove it? How, how to prove that 45 degrees is the best angle? How would you go about it? So S is fixed and alpha varies, okay? So, uh, well, certainly you can, incidentally, you could do this. So as long as you understand the physics, you can, you can just shoot and, in, in I mean, not literally, but uh, through uh, experimentation, you can just uh, uh, shoot a few times and, uh, like that. And, uh, well, this is the, an ellipse. Uh, Uh, this is an ellipse, but uh, uh, this was uh, one of the, well, this one, not this one, this one. Uh, yeah, uh, the, um, uh, so we, we have a spreadsheet, so I just want to uh, remind you. So we have a spreadsheet for, uh, for exactly that uh, situation. Uh, as you can see, it is, it is, this one kind of a, was a, uh, distorted pretty badly, so I'll have to copy it um, and make it over, start over. Okay, so, uh, so the gravity was, was uh, not zero. The, there, is no vert there is no horizontal gravity. So, uh, down. Okay, so so what are we looking at is uh, uh, this is our parabola. I want to shoot from elevation zero. Uh, it is why is it x prime is uh, okay. Uh, see. 
Okay, so uh, so as as you can see, we're shooting at elevation zero, and and then we see where it lands. Okay, so just a simple parabola, uh, and then how do we vary the uh, the velocity? Well, we look at x prime and we look at y prime. Okay, and they're determined by uh, then by these two formulas. So for example, here it is. I I throw uh, 50 feet per second in the vertically and horizontally. Uh, uh, a horizontal at 50 feet per second, vertically 100 feet per second. So I could, so it gives you only one number, so I would have to carry this out for, for a larger, uh, for a bunch of values, but I have to vary the, I have to vary the angle. So how? Well, the formula is right here. Uh, the formula is right here. I just have to uh, put, say, 100 cosine alpha, 100 sine alpha. So let me just at least uh, get started with this. So if I put my speed over here equal to 100, then my initial speed will be over here. I will put simply, uh, well, and let let put alpha here, alpha, alpha, say 0.5. Okay, so that's it. Give me gives me the angle. Okay, this will be equal to then. Uh, uh, my s times c cosine cosine of alpha okay and uh, and over here uh, this will be sine alpha okay so let me fix it so it will be uh, this is my speed this is my angle and I just need to replace sine with cosine Okay, so uh, so this is how you shoot 100 feet muzzle velocity is 100 feet per second, and you you uh, you throw it at 0.5 radians angle, and then it goes about 250 feet forward. Okay, so what remains is just to vary alpha and see see that 45 degrees is indeed the best. Okay, so we'll just do it next time.